evolution daily Problem here, right? What do you think? This is a big problem. I think this is a very big problem. But what is the subject? It's transportation. Oh, but that's a very interesting topic, Ishani. Yeah, not when you don't have a single idea about its history. Hmm. I think I have a solution to your problem. Really? What's that? Come on, tell me. How about we visit the Birla Industrial and Technological Museum tomorrow? Wow. Very good idea. 
There's a beautiful transport gallery over there and I'm sure you will like it. Surely. All right then. Let's get ready for tomorrow's expedition. It's too late now. Close these. We'll again start these tomorrow. Okay? Come on. This is BITM. Wow, this is so nice. We'll go over there. That is the transport gallery. Didi, Didi, look, a palanquin. Palanquin was a very effective means of transport and was used for centuries. Even now in the countryside, we can see people travelling on palanquins. Hey, palki chale hunna, hunna re hunna, palki chale hunna. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's go. The history of transportation spans the entire history of man. Early Paleolithic and Neolithic man walked through his world on his own two legs and couldn't transport more than he was able to carry on his back. In the late Neolithic, beasts of burden began to be used after animal domestication. But even then, they could only carry what could be loaded onto or tied to their animal backs. For a thousand years, the only means of transport which served to ease the traveller's burden was the skid. Skid? What's a skid? Remember the sledge we saw a few days back on the TV? Yeah. A skid is quite similar to today's sledge. Yes. It consists of a pair of poles tied together. Initially, men pulled these themselves. But later, they made use of animals to pull them. Didi, do you know that in the desert region, people use camels and guess what? They store the water on their humps. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it truly is incredible. Look, it is shown here superbly. Just press this button. Yep. Wow, this is so beautiful. This is the way camels carry baggage in the desert region. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it really is. Didi, what about the hilly areas? How do they transport luggage from place to place? Very important question, Ishani. As he knew about the uneven terrain of the mountainous areas, he began to adapt himself with the region and climate. Look, it is also represented over here. At first, man thought out of a way in which he could transport heavy and massive materials with relative ease. Then, Gradually, as he started implementing his idea into a log-shaped thing which he rolled to move his belongings, little by little, this log-shaped thing took the shape of a wheel. And this invention changed man's outlook. How come? To know this, we have to go through the history first. Do you know, Ishani, the oldest known archaeological evidence of the wheel dates from around 3500 BC and was found in Mesopotamia. Slowly, different regions developed their own styles of wheels. See here, this is the magnificent wheel of the Mesopotamian period. You know Ishani, in the Persian times, wheels were fabricated from multiple pieces of wood and required a skilled craftsman to produce them. But the Greek wheel was much lighter and used less material. In the Iron Age, iron tires were sometimes added to a wheel to protect the wood and increase the durability of the wheel. Then these wheels were used to move different carts. 
right? Yes, that is correct. These were used in chariots. Various civilizations style it in different ways. For example, the Sumerians started using chariots around 2500 BC. The Chinese were also not so far behind and invented a special chariot which could take the advantage of wind flow. The Greeks specialized in lightness and elegance. And then comes the Indus Valley Civilization Chariots, Harappan Civilization Chariots, and many more. Like the flying chariot in Ramayana. That is truly a very good example, Ishani. You know the chariots we are seeing here were not so easy to drive. Yeah, but why so? Because the roads at that time weren't so smooth and plain. The roads being rough, the wheels would break too often and hamper the day-to-day -day life of the people. So they thought out a method to construct broad and firm roads in 4000 BC. Didi, how did man learn to travel in water? At the very beginning, man created a flat structure of logs tied together which could float long distances. Sometimes, if they wanted to send message to someone who lived near the riverside, they used these logs as a means. Logs? You're joking, right? No, I'm not, Ishani. They carved their message on the log and put them in the water. As it leisurely passed by the receiver's place, he picked it up and read the message. Gosh, did this really happen? Oh, that reminds me. Yesterday I was watching a movie and there a dead person was laid on a flat structure and was put on the river. There's a myth behind it called Behula Lokhindor. But let's put that aside right now. Wow, movie directors have a such a mythical mind. One thing I can remember at this point that the hunters used a special type of a boat. Those are called the catamarans and they can store food in them also. That is correct. Not only in the prehistoric ages, but today also in the riverside areas, hunters use these types of boats to store fishes. Yes, that's right. I read in Amitav Ghosh's Hungry Tide that in the Sundarbans, the fishermen use these type of catamarans. I didn't know that. See, I do have some knowledge. Only that it doesn't work the time you need it. Didi, how I know. How did man started to fly in the air, right? Yup, that's right. Remember the example of Ramayana you gave? Yeah, that's okay. But what about it? You visualize the scene of God Ram on chariot, then you will notice that it was no ordinary chariot. It was a flying chariot. Yes, I remember. The idea of flying in the air began to seed inside man's mind and he started to think new ways and means of flying. Man's relation with the air was not so new. Let's go into the details of all these extraordinary inventions and get acquainted with their modernization. There's a lot more to discover. Okay, then let's go. Come on.